apologies are in order. First of all, sorry for being slightly late because I had to go take a pee break. Um, secondly, sorry for everyone who joined like over an hour ago thinking that I would go live at 2.15 because that's what I set the live to without thinking that the video is going to take more than 15 minutes to stream. But anyway, we are here today on a Monday at 3.15 p.m. New York time. Um, and those of you who have seen the video that just released, let me know how you liked it. I um, spent way too long editing this video. It was an extremely disorganized edit, I guess. Um, and I also went back a couple of times because I kept catching these little um, frames that did not belong and I still saw in the version that you saw that there were subtitles that were very uh, untimed and other little details that I regret in a way but also I'm at that point of surrender and exhaustion that I truly could not afford to watch a 70 minute video again after editing it for a month so I hope you enjoyed and I hope you caught some of those little glips of mistakes. I think they're fun. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I'm working on my own perfectionism. I feel like it's been to my detriment to feel like I need everything to be exactly the way it should be. And it's a lifelong journey, I think. Um, so hopefully we'll all be very forgiving with ourselves, with our time on earth, because... I don't know, there's just no need to make life harder than it is, you know? Um, so, anyway, mistakes, no mistakes, whatever. There's my video. I hope it does well. We'll see. Um, I really do want to do a Trader Joe's haul one day, but I also, between this and my part-time job and trying to give myself more time to live, um, obviously I've decided in the past... 10 months since I've been fired, um, that being a content creator full-time is not a path I want to go down, but being a content creator part-time is certainly a fun thing to do, and I hope you enjoy that too. Um, I am going to be cooking some split mung, pe mung beans right now um, because I soaked it in grandma's dumpling water this morning, and so I feel like I should cook it. And I'm just going to season it very um, simply with salt, maybe put a few cloves of garlic in there, and maybe some mysterious spice that I won't tell you yet, but if you're subscribed to the Burlap and Barrel newsletter, or if you are a subscriber to the Spice Club, then you would have received notice of this spice. But technically I'm not supposed to tell you that it's available, because it's not yet, <laughs> unless you're part of the Spice Club. Um, so I can't tell you what spice it is, but it's a delicious spice. It's very breezy, let's just say. Um, and I also want to show you the four things that I thrifted from the Salvation Army today. Just very inconsequential, mundane things, but I thought I'd show you. And uh, maybe snack, and hopefully I'll be off of this live by four so I can run to the gym and start my week off with a little bit of mental... Uh, release. Um, I started the day picking up mail from a hinge match that I basically ended up uh, referring to my previous landlord so that he could take over the apartment that I no longer live in. Um, and he's been very kind in keeping me up to date with mailings that still come through for me, my mom, and my grandma due to a various string of bureaucratic oopsie doopsies where my old mailing address is still on file for all of these accounts and one of them turned out to be one of mom's um, JP Morgan investment accounts that I had already rolled out all of the funds into another account but apparently there were dividends that kicked in after the transfer was complete which meant these two accounts that have my dead mom's name on it have less than five dollars total in them now and they're still sending multi-page statements and info updates to my old address um, 
and I got very frustrated and I called them today and I said, hey, I changed my address like 10 months ago. Is there something you can help me do about this? Can you either close these accounts down or roll them out or something? And she basically ended up helping me rolling out one account, but the other account, because it's a different kind of IRA account, needs to go through this bureaucratic process of me filing a form that requires a notarization on the form before I can send it in for address change request or for account closure request. And I just got so fed up. My mom's been dead for almost two years now and I'm still dealing with this account with less than five bucks in it. And she's asking me to notarize shit, which will cost me more than the accounts are worth. And I got very angry on this phone call, very heated on this phone call. And I said, maybe you should mention this in your next team meeting that like you should make this more of a careful process for families dealing with grief so that they don't have to go through this bullshit. And this lady, I understand we're all human and I'm sure she gets multiple calls of anger um, a day. But this lady proceeds to tell me that one, she understands what I'm going through because her own father just passed away two months ago. And I said, okay. And then she said multiple times during this call, it's not like there's information in these mailings that would parentheses harm you. And that's just mind boggling to me. It has my mom's name on it. It has her account. It has maybe not the full account number, but the last four digits of the account number. It has the amount value of these accounts in it. And she's telling me that what are the people who are receiving these letters getting? And I just thought that was like a ridiculous thing to say to someone who's telling you that you've been sending your statements to a defunct address and you are not making this process easy at all. Um, so this rant is to tell you guys to please not invest with JP Morgan Chase. Uh, all financial institutions are bad. But JP Morgan Chase is like the shit dump of the shit dump. And um, they're huge. They invest in all these bad things that all other financial institutions also invest in, I realize. But their customer service is awful. Their bureaucracy is awful. Um, the, the fact that their employees leave the company without telling clientele like me that they're leaving shows you how bad of a place it is to work. So if you work for JP Morgan Chase, Maybe you work for a less bad bank, or maybe don't work for banks at all because money is not a real thing. Um, and if you do bank with JP Morgan Chase, I'm asking you today to consider banking with another institution because they suck. Um, and I think out of dealing with all the bureaucratic shit after my mom died, JP Morgan Chase is hands down the worst experience I've had from the smallest Chinese banks to the biggest Chinese banks, to Capital One, to whatever else accounts my mom has had, JP Morgan Chase, hands down, the worst. Um, so whether or not it's government rules, I don't care. I just know that I um, did not experience this level of bureaucracy and bullshit from other institutions. And I think your money can be better spent elsewhere. Um, so that's my rant. My peas are at a simmer. I'm going to peel some garlic. I'm going to throw in my mystery spice. Um, and that's it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the rant. Does anybody else have fun things happening this week or sad things happening this week that they would like to share with the class now? Um, feel free to volunteer your own happiness and worries. Happy birthday, Jessica.
mean, honestly, not having enough money to invest means that you are doing the most good for the world. Because investing money just is what capitalism wants you to do to keep this fake institution alive. Um, if I were not brought up with the values that I was brought up with, I probably would have followed a very different path in terms of thinking about my relationship with work and money. Um, Oh, Benjamin. <sighs> Chase is awful. Just th Has anyone had a good experience with Chase? Because they're bad. They're just bad. I've not gotten... None of my interactions with them have been without passive aggression. I've never been treated with so much passive aggression before at a bank. Um, I've felt diminished by most people I've interacted with on a level that's less superficial than just going up to the teller's window. I've had um, financial advisors tell me that like I'm not making the right choice, um, that they can't give me financial advice, which is fine, I guess it's a legality thing, but then they'll also proceed to badger me with a fake little uh, pitch about why Chase is the best place to invest in, and I'm just like, done. Done, done, done. Happy 33rd birthday to your daughter. Wells Fargo is also bad. They're, they're both bad, but I think JP Morgan Chase might be bigger than Wells Fargo, although I'm not sure. Um, I think just the bigger you are, the more opportunity you have to screw people over and not care about it, so. That's that. So I ranted to Aaron about my experience. And maybe this is just a way for me to feel better about yelling at a person who just lost their own dad two months ago and having to still show up to work in that mindset. But I was like, maybe I can be one of those people that push them to quit their jobs. Um, and maybe find another company to work for that isn't Chase. Maybe they realize this is a shitty industry that does shitty things to people and maybe they'll decide to not do this. I don't know. Probably not though. Probably not. But hey, maybe. Mmm. This smells so good. Okay, so let me show you my haul. many Virgos. What were parents? Oh, are you guys Christmas sex babies? You might be Christmas sex babies. Um, that makes a lot of sense, actually. I was wondering why there were so many birthdays in my friend group this month. Now we know. Okay. Here's my receipt from the Salvation Army. I got overcharged, believe it or not. One of these 99 cents is supposed to read 79 cents, but three of them read 99 cents and one of them read 39 cents, which is accurate, but I got overcharged 20 cents, but whatever. Um, I got two glasses. I have to wash all of them, they're kind of gross, so don't mind the grossness. Um, this one is a pretty basic glass. This one was 39 cents. This one was supposed to be, sorry, this one was 99 cents or 79 cents, and this one was 99 cents. Um, just two drinking glasses. This one has a little funky little bulge near the bottom. 
which I enjoy. Um, this was a 39 cent plate. This is, you can't see it, but it's got like a lot of little tiny cracks in it. But I feel like if I put some sort of hydrogen peroxide on it, it'll clean it out. Um, and this was made in England, so I found that very interesting. It says, Johnson Brothers made in England Ironstone IU2. So, um, there's my little plate. And then finally, we got a little shallow bowl thing that I love this kind of shallow bowls. I have a lot of them. Also with this kind of color rimmed feature. And, um, this one says made in Romania, I think. So I found that interesting. It also has a sticker on it that says 59 cents, although I was charged a dollar for this. So Salvation Army is jacking up prices. Um, in any case, I will be washing these while my pea soup is simmering away. And that's that's very, pretty much all of my content today. I hope you I hope you enjoyed my various content. Um, it's also time to run my dishwasher today, I think. Oh yes. If anybody wants to offer up um, topics of discussion for us to talk about, I'm happy to do that. Or we can just wash dishes in silence, um, which you are no stranger to by this point. But happy Monday. I wish you a good week. Yeah, I don't, it's not quite a split pea, but it's like a mung bean kind of split pea concoction. Um, it's not the American split pea, but it is a split pea. Did you raise money for farm school? I think a few people donated via Instagram. I tried to do like a YouTube fundraiser thing, but I don't really know how YouTube works. Honestly, I'm a little confused. Um, so we'll see. Has anyone tried donating through YouTube? What was the process like? I just saw the function. Um, I'm not really sure if anybody uses YouTube fundraising. But yeah, technically we are supposed to be fundraising for farm school um, because farm school runs on a gift economy and uh, we're supposed to kind of do what we can to keep the program going for future generations of students. That's cool. I hope YouTube doesn't take away any profit. Thank you for donating. Yeah, I didn't put it on this stream. Um, I was just testing it on some previous streams to see if it actually works. Hello, Austria. I'm glad you enjoyed. I just, I'm too lazy to use it. I'm such a trip. I have all the things, I just don't use them. I am my mom's daughter after all, huh? How do you get the coupons? Uh, the, the Lidl coupons were mailed to my address. I guess they found me, or they just send it to everyone who's nearby. Will you do a thrift store haul and show us? That's what I've been doing. Every time I have a haul, I show you guys. But no, I don't plan on doing a thrift video. Uh, most places are kind of cagey about you filming inside. It makes the footage capture very difficult, and I just kind of don't feel like doing that. So... The theme, the theme of my life right now 
I was making things as easy as possible for myself. And making things as organic as possible. What is world's finest? I have no idea. Southeast Texas, how bad is your weather? Um, here's my pea cooking away. What tips would you give to stay consistent with content? Like making content? I am not the best person to ask this question. Have you seen how inconsistent my uploads have been? The algorithm does not like me anymore. Um, I don't know if it ever has liked me, but it definitely doesn't like me now. I'm gonna add a little salt to this. Oh yeah, right, world's finest. What kind of scam was it? I think I had to sell those chocolates to go to prom and then I think about a quarter of the way through selling my box, I was like, fuck this. I don't wanna sell shitty chocolate to other people. I think I ate one of the bars and I was like, this tastes awful. Um, and I don't know if I wanna go to prom this bad to have to sell shitty chocolate to people and beg them to buy it off of me because I'm too poor to go to prom. So then I was just like, I'm too poor to go to prom. Let me not go to prom. And then I didn't go to prom. Character building, as they say. Look where I'm at now. <laughs> uh, how did you learn to edit videos? Fun fact, I took a half credit film class in senior year of college after I had completed all of my requirements and I was like, fuck it, let's just do something fun with my remaining semester. And it was in that class that we had to learn how to use Final Cut Pro um, and when I first started editing my own videos for this channel, uh, I obviously was not going to pay for Final Cut Pro or any of the associated video editing softwares because they're just ridiculously expensive. But Aaron told me that um, DaVinci Resolve was free, so we got that, we downloaded it, and I started basically remembering all the different basic cutting functions from Final Cut Pro, which translated pretty directly onto DaVinci's procedures, and I don't really have a good workflow. Um, Zach actually saw my Instagram post of how complicated my timeline for the video cut was, and he was like, maybe we need to do a workshop for you in the fall on how to streamline your timelines. Um, so I just do it in the most idiotic, inefficient, new way possible but we get videos out and you guys watch it so Wow, Texas, you guys are really going through it. Um, clearly, I should not be cooking a soup today. This was dumb. Uh, we are hitting over 90 degrees Fahrenheit in New York today. So we're also not having a easy breezy week this week, but not enough to deter me from doing stupid shit like this, I guess. these purple plum cots they're plum apricots so let's eat one of these this one feels the softest yep I still use da Vinci that's, that's 
software. I feel like plums this year have been very delicious. I don't know if anyone else has noticed it, but I feel like plums in past years have either been sour, bitter, or just like not at all right. And the plums this year have been very right for the most part. There have been off ones, but. Juicy, soft, not mealy yet. I've also been eating frozen blueberries. A lot of people like eating frozen grapes. Frozen blueberries are easier on my teeth because they're tinier. And you don't have as much exposure to the cold elements as you might with grapes. They also, if you ever have mealy blueberries and they don't taste good when they're fresh and at room temp, if you freeze them, you can't taste the mealiness anymore because all frozen blueberries kind of just taste like denser sorbet bites. And they're very nice and cold and soothing. Um, you miss a start. The thumbnail is a lead up to my rant about how you should not be banking with JP Morgan Chase and if you do you should move your money out and go to another bank because they suck. All banks suck. They suck harder. Um, that's about it. You can freeze anything but it will just change the texture. Pesto is probably a safe thing to freeze. It's already got like a grainy texture. It's already so broken down that you have no cell structure to worry about destroying. They took money from your account? Why, because of fees that they didn't tell you about? Can you freeze dairy milk? Yes, but it will separate. It'll separate once you melt it back. It funkifies the texture. But if you want to prevent it from going bad, you should freeze it. And then you can use it in stuff like baking where the texture doesn't matter as much because you're processing it further. Basically, anything that you freeze, it probably needs to be processed after it gets defrosted. You should not expect to be freezing a produce, such as a carrot or a pear, and having it defrost itself into perfectly fresh fruit and produce. It'll change the cell structure because what happens in the freezer is all of the water and moisture in your fruits and veggies and eggs and milks and all of that, um, they freeze. And so all of the cells kind of freeze into little crystalline structures, which are much sharper than water molecules. And uh, they basically burst the cells, the water cells. And then when you defrost it, Alton Brown does a much better job of explaining this in one episode of Good to Eats that I watched over and over again in middle school. 
but basically when you defrost it all the cells have been punctured during the freezing process and so they start leaking which is why if you freeze a blueberry they retain their shape while they're frozen but after you defrost them they'll look really shrivelly and sad and leaky that's because the freezing process destroyed and punctured all of their cell structures they might still taste relatively the same but texture is a large part of our perception of flavor so they won't taste the same even though they do taste the same know what i'm saying you are an unreliable narrator that's what i'm saying Do you bake the Japanese sweet potato first and then freeze it? That's fascinating. I think watching that much Alton Brown in my middle school years was highly formative for my brain. Apparently he's not a very nice person in real life. Just from other people's accounts, but I'm also not a very nice person in real life. People don't know that because you don't live with me in real life. Frozen blueberries. Frozen blueberries are very addictive. And then they turn my teeth blue. No plans for the pears. I just bought them all for a dollar. I'll eat them. spices which also came in the latest spice club box this is a special kind of oregano that we use in our zatar blend it comes from palestine and this is a cumin and coriander blend the cumin is the top selling cumin that burlap and barrel carries from afghanistan but the coriander in this blend is a very special limited supply of um it's like a very citrusy coriander and it comes from india 
and uh, this is one of the new blends, I guess, that was featured in Spice Club. I'm gonna put some of this in, because I feel like the herb that I cannot mention yet is not gonna do enough flavoring for me. So, there's that. I should probably also put some sort of oil in there, huh? Are we overpaying for spices because of the jars they come in? I mean, packaging is a lot of the sticker price for sure. But also Burlap and Barrel's whole thing is they pay the growers more equitably. I learned that the process of um, paying their farmers is they ask the farmers what they want to be paid and then they pay them that price. <laughs> so I'm not sure how many other companies do that, but it's nice to know that businesses can run like this and still stay alive, huh? Um, but obviously, yes, there's a lot of overhead price, right? You think about sourcing, transportation, all of the costs of staffing, all of the costs of finding co-packers in the US, there's a lot of process that gets a spice from India or Palestine or Turkey or Spain or Vietnam in a processed form, packaged and cleaned and ready for you to use in your dishes, right? There's dozens of people involved in that whole line of production that gets this product to you. So yeah, the spice itself does not cost $11. The $11 that you're paying for the spice includes costs of packaging, obviously, but also transportation, customs taxes, cleaning processes, processing processes, um, shipping, um, factoring in broken jars and all of that, paying out staff, me, customer service, sit, um, supply and logistics, and all of that. So in what world do we pay I mean, we have to wonder why it is that we can buy meat for under $2 a pound. Like, what are the conditions that that thing is produced under that would give it to you at such a cheap price? I keep buying this ground pork for grandma for her dumplings. And uh, Aaron, who's very into eating vegetarian now because he just can't stand the element of animal cruelty involved in most of the meat production processes that we engage in. Um, you know, like sent me an article about how... <sighs> they do a lot of shit to animals without anesthesia. And animals feel pain. Um, and I've been thinking about, you know, like... How much of that pain we absorb, consciously and unconsciously, um, physically and mentally and psychologically and morally and spiritually and all of that. Um, it comes at a cost, even if it's not translating into the cost of the wallet. So it hurts to live. It hurts, it hurts to live. Um, I don't like this world. I don't like what we've chosen to do with it. <coughs> Influencers that buy extra glass containers for products that come in perfectly usable packaging, they do it for optics, right? They want to show you that they care about the world by using glass, but they don't think about what the products were actually transported in. It's performance. Guys, in the same way that that lady probably doesn't want to pick up angry customer phone calls for Chase, but she does it because she needs to make a living, influencers do what they do to make a living. I do what I do to make a living. 
Um, I just have lower tolerance for doing shit that doesn't align with my values because it hurts me and I'm in a privileged enough financial situation where I don't have to work jobs that grind me down. Um, especially after experiencing what I experienced towards the end of my, my stay at Delish, um, double barreled with my mom passing away and double barreled with her whole outlook on money and savings and status in life. I think it was a hell of a wallop to reconsider what I want to tolerate with the rest of my life. Um, and also keeping in mind that I, I just don't know when I'm gonna die, you know? There is no guarantee. So in the time that I have, what it is that I want to do, what it is that I want others to do to me, what kind of chances I afford them to do things to me, all of those are in my mind still. The lottery is such a scam though, right? And like, meat is one thing. But like these blueberries that I keep buying for a dollar? I'm thinking about where they've traveled from. I'm thinking about how the hell it is that it's possible that I can buy blueberries for a dollar. I'm thinking about what the people who picked the blueberries got paid for a box of blueberries that only cost me one dollar. They probably got like two cents for that box. Um, because the middleman is who takes the most profit out of the price you're paying. Um, so there's no <laughs> good way to consume unless you're growing your own food and eating the results of your own labor, but how many people have their own land and what kind of privilege comes with having your own land that you can have not only land but also time to grow your own food and why it is that we don't really value food production the way we should and why it is that we don't value education the way we should and why it is that we don't value, I don't know, a healthcare system that actually works to help people instead of putting them into intolerable debt. Um, why it is that college costs so much, why it is that you can default on private student loans and get a discount for paying them off, but you somehow can't default on federal student loans, um, why it is that the government does everything it can to say it's helping you while it is stabbing you in the back over and over again and tell you lies so that they can get elected and forget about those lies as soon as they are elected and why it is that it happens in all the countries across all different kinds of cultures and why it is that we are so fucked up guys we're so fucked what happened what happened I mean, Ellie, I appreciate that. Ellie says, I've been unemployed for an entire year because tech is so volatile, and in some interviews, I've had to straight up say there's a lot I won't tolerate, and I've had to make tough decisions. Yes, I think this is what a general strike means for the world, right? And like, yes, it is a lofty idea. It is a castle in the sky sort of thing, the idea of a general strike. But the idea, in my mind, of a general strike is people across industries all over the world um, finally acknowledging and verbalizing the fact that we work jobs that are either meaningless, bullshit, detrimental, completely manipulative or extractive and exploitative and uh, is making all of us sick on very many levels and going, well, fuck this. Like, we need to make our jobs more conducive to keeping us alive. Um, and I wonder what kind of world we would have to live in in order to get enough of a sentiment and devotion to general striking. I feel like it's going to be one of those scenarios where you only start turning your life around when your doctor gives you a death notice. Um, 
And so I am resigned, I think, to the idea of staying in this unhappy status quo because everybody else is not unhappy enough yet to do anything about it. They don't have to change. Um, I think even just in terms of organizing um, Hearst Union and participating in organizing Hearst Union and witnessing the trajectory of how people participate and show up and don't participate and don't show up. Um, there's a minority of people who are worked up and inspired enough to prioritize bettering conditions and the rest of the people are a combination of scared um, hesitant and simply unbothered enough to not care about it. And the, the sad thing is we don't really get to change our world sustainably unless everybody is on board. We don't, we don't literally need everybody, but we need a large amount of people and the vast majority of people are not uncomfortable enough yet. <sighs> so, I don't know what to say. I wish I could be more inspired, um, but I'm just depressed. <laughs> ah. It's also not just class unity, right? Like that I saw a lot of class division um at Hearst too. Basically people pitching managers who can't technically belong to the union against those they manage who can be eligible for the union. And a lot of people are saying are like take they take on this mentality of we must help management squash the union efforts because we're managers like we're on the side of management but you don't need to side with the exploiters just because you can't immediately reap the benefits of fighting against the exploitation you can support the defense against exploitation because it's the right thing to do and the right thing to do is existentially sustainable for all, even though you might not see material effects kick in for you immediately following implementation of change. I think we are very nearsighted. And I learned this a lot in farm school too, where we talk about how we make crop plans for this season, but in order for us to become more aware of what we're doing as growers, we must also crop plan with the future in mind, keeping in mind what this season's crop management impacts next season's crop management and what ways is what we're doing today changing what we're going to be able to do in the next few years. And I think in our world, we lack a lot of that farsight of saying, yes, I can do this today and get this much, so I'm gonna grab it and get my chance while it's still there. And not a whole lot of, I can do it that's this way or I can do it that way and I can leave more to grow and make it more sustainable in future years. Um, we've become a very extractive culture. We've become a very opportunistic culture. We've become a very self-centered culture and it's because we were told to compete with each other and with the world and we have been given language in the framework of fighting and violence and winning and losing and we have all these paradigms in us that teach us if you don't get something at the end of the day then you're a loser and why would you want to lose you loser you want to be a winner don't you or are you a piece of worthless shit and um I think that's a falsehood that has led us down this pathway of 
destroying the world and for what I don't know okay y'all I have finished cooking the stew thing that's not really a stew it's just a cooked pea grain thing um and I'm gonna turn the heat off and let it continue steaming. And that's all I have for you. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna go to the gym anymore. <laughs> I feel really sad now. But I hope you take care of yourself. Eat your vitamins, drink your water, stay out of the sun. Like grandma says, it might kill you. Um, and uh, be kind to yourself. And if you have enough kindness, go around and be kind to others. And divest your money away from J.P. Morgan Chase is the moral of the story. Do not bank with J.P. Morgan Chase. That's all. Thank you for listening.